It causes inflammation in the skin and other areas of the body, triggering the immune system to make too much collagen. And as a result, patches of tight and hard skin can develop, and in most serious cases, causes damage to the heart, the lungs, the digestive system, and sometimes with lethal consequences. Today, three perspectives to help us understand more about the disease and its impact. Let's go behind the mystery of scleroderma. I was in college doing a history final and I specifically remember turning the test in and I was in tears because my hands hurt so bad. Scleroderma literally means hardening of the skin. Um, it is an autoimmune disease and also considered a connective tissue rheumatologic disease. The two major subtypes are localized versus systemic. And localized scleroderma really just affects the skin. The systemic form, which we now refer to really as systemic sclerosis or SSC, they develop not only skin involvement but other internal organ involvement as well. What makes scleroderma so challenging to treat is that it is an extremely heterogeneous disease. Every Every patient is different, every patient is unique in terms of how they present initially and their changes over time. It was about 10 years ago and I just started my freshman year at Sacramento State when I started to realize that my hands were a little off. I went home one weekend and that's when my mom noticed that my knuckles were really swollen and I had told her about how my fingers started turning blue whenever it was really cold and she told me that we have Raynaud's in our family. However, we knew something else was wrong because at that point my hands started to stiffen up, the mobility in them was getting less, my wrists started to hurt, I had dry skin on my arms and in my scalp. We went and did a full blood panel. The blood panel showed that I have an antibody um, related to scleroderma and so I was referred to a rheumatologist for further testing. So the major complications in scleroderma, we think of fibrosis or scarring of the heart, so it's not able to pump as well. Interstitial lung disease is a lot more common than cardiac involvement and is actually the number one cause of mortality in patients with systemic sclerosis. Pulmonary arterial hypertension is also a major cause of death and can lead to heart failure. Scleroderma renal crisis can lead to dialysis dependence and it can lead to need for a kidney transplant. It can also affect the blood vessels. Um, so this manifests typically as Raynaud's phenomenon. And then finally, in terms of gastrointestinal involvement, Patients are unable to move food forward, and this can lead to malabsorption, so they become very malnourished. So some of the most debilitating complications of scleroderma have to do with musculoskeletal problems. Because of the tightening of the skin, patients often will develop contractors of their hands. Digital ulcers are also on the fingertips that can cause a lot of pain for patients. They may suffer from swollen, painful joints, weakness and difficulty swallowing all related to musculoskeletal problems. So there is no cure for scleroderma and we're in major need for further research to find a cure. After I was diagnosed with the limited sclerosis scleroderma, I wasn't sure what was to come in the future. I didn't know if there would ever be a cure. At that point, I just accepted that my life was over. Scleroderma patient activist Sharon Motsky founded the Scleroderma Research Foundation in 1987. As a teenager, Sharon had been a competitive figure skater. She received an MBA from Stanford University and worked as a management consultant before being diagnosed with the disease in 1982. And although Sharon passed away from complications of the disease in 2002, her vision lives on today. Sharon and I were college roommates. I adored her, she was so smart. When Sharon created the Scleroderma Research Foundation, I joined the board and have been on the board ever since. From the very beginning, Sharon's mission was to fund research that would find a cure for scleroderma. That was it. We remain focused in our commitment to cutting edge genetical research, public education, and raising the funds necessary to wipe out scleroderma. When we return, how the Scleroderma Research Foundation is devoting every possible resource to solve the mysteries of this complex and sometimes fatal disease. We'll be back right after this.
Welcome back. The mission of the Scleroderma Research Foundation is to fund and facilitate the most promising, highest quality research. As well as recruiting top tier investigators from around the world to help understand the causes, discover new treatments, and ultimately cure the disease. One of the things that was so important for Sharon with funding this research was to find what was the cause of this disease as well as advanced treatments for this so that people didn't have to suffer in the way that she was. Our scientific advisory board recruits experts in all different fields like rheumatology, immunology, genetics, fibrosis. Because of the many different forms that scleroderma can take, it's so critical to have experts in all these different areas. And that, I think, is one of the most amazing things that differentiates us from all other foundations for scleroderma. So the Scleroderma Research Foundation is the founder of a project called CONQUER. What's so interesting about this, it's the first time ever that we've been able to create a registry that goes across the country, and that way we're able to study scleroderma patients and what happens over a length of time. Scleroderma Research Foundation is also the nonprofit partner for the registry called GRASP. So what GRASP does is study why scleroderma patients that are from the African-American community are hit so much harder and the disease is more severe. I think one of the most exciting things that is supported by the Scleroderma Research Foundation is a new adaptive clinical trials platform called Conquest. And what this can do is this can accelerate the development and approval of the most effective therapies for the treatment of scleroderma. When I was diagnosed, it was five days before I turned 20. And at that point in my life, I was not ready to accept the fact that I had scleroderma. I still wanted that normal college lifestyle. However, my symptoms continued to get worse. Everyday things started to become harder, like holding a fork or even cutting my food up. I was originally at Sac State for athletic training, however, there was no way I was going to be able to tape up an ankle when I can't hold a pencil myself. It was after about a year and a half that I decided that it was time that scleroderma does not define who I am, and that is when I started my management plan and started to reach out to the people around me for support. Sharon and I were brainstorming about how could we do an event that would raise money. So we thought, let's do an event called Cool Comedy Hot Cuisine. And that has been a fundraiser for the Scleroderma Research Foundation for all these years to raise awareness and to raise money to fund cutting edge research. It means so many people have done the event year after year. And part of it, I think, is because they fell in love with Sharon and then of course they fell in love with Bob. Bob Saget was one of the comedians early on and did the event and of course was wonderful, but then a year later, his sister was diagnosed with scleroderma. So Bob became a member of the board of Scleroderma Research Foundation and of course from then on was the MC and helped to drive this event for many, many years. The heartfelt feelings that happen in that room I think are what help us to raise money people knowing that it's so critical to find a cure for this disease. Needing a community when I was first diagnosed, my mom reached out to the Scleroderma Research Foundation. Working the Cool Comedy Hot Cuisine events is where I really started to find a community of people who not only supported me, but other patients with scleroderma. The last eight years of my scleroderma journey have not been easy but it led me to a place where I have a job that I'm passionate about. I'm planning a wedding with the man who supports me no matter what, and I'm part of a foundation that continues to search for a cure for scleroderma. For resources and information on scleroderma, visit the Scleroderma Research Foundation at srfcure.org. And of course, you can always visit our website, thebalancingout.com, if you want more information. We'll be back right after this.